Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden, and welcome to this announcement of my course, React Roots. So React Roots is a course that will teach you the basics of React and TypeScript, and you'll be able to build modern single-page web applications with React and TypeScript. So originally, this course was actually a live class that had 20 enrolled students. And so as you watch all of the lesson videos, you're going to see me interacting with those students and answering questions, providing clarifications, or, or listening to their, their comments, those kinds of things. But now, if you purchase this course, you can consume all of those materials that the original students got access to at your own pace. Now, you might be wondering, what do you get with this? Uh, we have eight lessons, which is about 16 hours of video instruction. There are six sets of pre-lesson reading materials, six sets of post-lesson exercises, and then each exercise has between one and four separate exercises. It's about 16 total exercises. Um, and then you also get a set of project requirements. And so the way this course is structured is through the first six lessons, you have hands-on exercises to practice all of the concepts and isolations. And then finally, the project that you work on after lesson seven takes all of the things that you learned to build a project with React and TypeScript. And there are several project descriptions included to get you some ideas of, of what you can build, um, but you'll get access to those with the course materials. And I have some examples on the website, which I'll show you in a second. And of course, if you need help, we do have a public Discord. So uh, there's a lot of community members and volunteers that will uh, try to answer your questions if you have them, uh, if you decide to take the course. Now you might be wondering, what are you going to learn in this course? Um, you're going to learn React and TypeScript, but the thing to think about and the thing to know is when you're working with React and TypeScript, it's not just React and TypeScript. There's a lot of other things on top of it. And so I try to do my best to break all of those things down. So I teach React in the context of modern JavaScript or ESNX, also build tools and TypeScript. And I also like to teach the why and the how. So as we go through all of these concepts and as we learn React, I break down how things work under the hood or how things are related together and then actually show how to do it. And then you get to practice doing it as well. So in order to demonstrate this, let's actually play a game. So I'm going to show you some React and TypeScript code, and I'm going to point out a line of code, and I want you to tell me what it is. So uh, is it modern JavaScript or ESNext? Is it build tools, TypeScript, GSX, or TSX, React, or some combination of all of them? So let's play a game. Now we have here a component called post list. It takes in an array of posts and then shows a post for every single one. But let's look at each line of code. So line one is importing a post type, but what else is happening on that line of code? Line two, we're importing a post component. What's happening there? Line three, we're importing some CSS. I bet some of you are going to get this wrong. Uh, lines five through seven are uh, uh, defining this post list props interface. What is that? Line nine has like at least three different things going on. Uh, we've got lines 11 through 13, and then also line 12. So all of the answers for what each of those things are, are going to be at the end, but let's break down a little bit more what else you're going to learn in this course. Uh, so it's broken into eight lessons. Each lesson is about two hours of instruction. The first lesson is Intro to Modern Web Development. We then have Intro to TypeScript. We've got Intro to React and Component Hierarchies. And then lesson four is actually a review of the first three lessons, and also we dive into React Form Basics. And so because this was a live course and I was able to get feedback in real time and also look at people's uh, solutions to exercises, I was able to identify some of the things where people were having issues or maybe something that, we, that wasn't completely clear in the first three lessons. So we actually spend an hour just reviewing what we did in the first few lessons and also clearing up some things that, that some of the students had confusion about. Lesson five is all about component lifecycle hooks and API requests. Lesson six is about React Router and the context API. Lesson seven covers React styling solutions and component libraries. And then after lesson seven, you'll use everything you've learned so far and practiced so far to work on a full React app. And then finally, after you've worked on the project, we also have an overview of the React ecosystem. So this course does its best to just teach React and then a few external libraries that help with React. But there is so much more beyond the basics. And in lesson eight, I kind of give a whirlwind tour of all the things you might encounter as you're learning and working with React. And also give you some context for what you might choose or what you might use when you're building real world React apps. Now, if you head over to reactroots.com, it has all of this information and more. Uh, the first thing that I want to point you to is who this course is for. So this course is not for complete beginners, but if you have experience with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, this course is probably for you. And if you expand this little section here, these are all the things that you need to know how to do before you take this course. And uh, essentially what I'm saying is that I do not cover these things in this course. You're gonna need to make sure that you have experience uh, building apps that do these things before taking this course. Also, every single lesson has all of the learning objectives broken down for you. So here, I have all the lessons that I talked about, but if you click on it, you can see the exact learning objectives that are covered in each one of these lessons. So there's no confusion about 
does this course cover it? Does it not cover it? If you're wondering, does this course cover a specific topic, head over here, look at the learning objectives. And if it's listed here, I do cover it. If it's not listed here, it's not covered in the course. So I'm doing my best to be completely transparent about what is in every lesson. And because of my education background, I know that learning objectives are some of the best ways for a teacher to describe what's going to happen in a lesson and make sure that we cover those things in a lesson. So definitely check this out to see all the things that are covered before you buy the course, because this tells you exactly what's going to be covered in the course. Now, you might be wondering, what are the outcomes here? What are you going to be able to do by the end of this course? Check out this section here because I also have some example project descriptions. So these are the kind of things that you could do for the project. If you expand them, you can see more info on what the app would entail. And you can also see what I expect the app to have in it as well. So if you're curious, what are you going to be able to build? Definitely check out this section here. And also note that when you buy the course, I have some more advanced uh, project ideas and descriptions that could help you out with, with deciding what to build. And also, you might be wondering, um, what do you get access to with the, with the ticket purchase? So if you click this button here that says purchase the course, that's going to take you over to Superpeer, which is the platform I'm using to host the course. And you'll see the wording purchase a $35 ticket. Uh, ticket is just access to the course. So once you buy it, you'll have indefinite access to watch all of the VODs. You'll get access to all of the materials. Um, and it's just a minimum price of, of $35. Um, if you have more questions, definitely check out reactroots.com. I have more frequently asked questions listed here, including links to some of the YouTube videos I've done that kind of demonstrate my teaching style as well. Now let's talk about how this course is structured because this is not a traditional code along style course. Essentially every student is going to build something different based on all of the things that they learn in this course. But let's talk about how that works. So I like to call this the lesson sandwich because the, the first six lessons all have included an hour of pre-lesson reading material. So I have links to articles and blog posts and tutorials that talk about the things that we're going to learn in the lesson. And essentially by doing this before you watch the lesson video, you're kind of getting exposed to those lesson topics and it's getting you thinking about the those topics before we actually learn about them in the lesson itself. And then each lesson is about two hours of in-class instruction. I give demonstrations, examples, explanations as we work through the materials. And you're expected to take notes and write down any questions that you might have. Now, ideally, I answer any of the, any of the questions that come up. But if, they, if I don't, of course, join the Discord, ask a question there. And you also get access to all of the slides and code examples, so you can actually follow along there as you're watching the videos. But it's important to note, these videos are not just code-alongs. Um, you're not supposed to just type the code as I write it. It's better if you, if you take notes, if you internalize everything, so that after the lesson, you can then practice what we learned to make sure that you actually understand it without watching the video or without looking at the examples. So uh, the first six lessons all include between one to two hours of after-class exercises, where you can practice all of the things that were covered in isolation. And this gives you hands-on practice and really shows you whether or not you learn the thing or whether or not you understand the thing. And I do recommend in your first pass of working on these exercises, don't reference the lesson videos, don't reference the examples, just do your best to solve it without looking at some external resource. Because if you can do that, that actually shows that you learned the thing um, and you're actually making progress. Uh, now, of course, if you get stuck or you need any help, go back, watch the videos, check the examples, and then also ask in the Discord uh, if you need to, if you get really stuck. Um, but this is how all of the lessons are structured. And I do believe this is one of the best ways to learn really anything because you're not just copying exactly what I do. Um, you're actually showing that you know how to do the thing by working on the exercises and then finally by applying everything you know to the project that you work on. Now, for all this info and more, reactroots.com. If you want to join the Discord, coding.garden slash Discord. And then I also have a mailing list. So if you want to get informed about courses that I launch or any other Coding Garden news, definitely join the, the mailing list at list.coding.garden. Now, let's get into the answers of the code that I showed you earlier. So again, we're trying to break down for any given line of code, is it modern JavaScript, is it build tools, is it TypeScript, is it JSX or TSX, React, or some combination of all of them. So line one is a combination of three things. So first you have the type keyword, which comes from TypeScript. So this is uh, TypeScript that we're looking at right there. This right here is actually ES modules or modern JavaScript because we're doing a named import. And then the whole line itself is actually modern JavaScript or ES modules because we're importing a thing. But notice we're not specifying the file extension here, and that actually is getting handled by the build process or the build tool, uh, because ES modules actually require a file extension, but because there's no file extension here, the build tools that we're using know what we mean by this line of code so it can be imported. Now line two is just an ES module import, but again, we left the file extension off, so the build tool is helping us there to be able to import that file in. Line three is just the build process or the build tool. So uh, ES modules or JavaScript or TypeScript, they have no idea how to actually import a CSS file. 
So when the build tool comes across a, an import that is not a JavaScript or TypeScript file, it actually has to do something special. So there's behind the scenes, there's actually a CSS uh, file loader that's happening in, in the build process. And it, it's actually going to import that CSS file, get all of the source code, inject a style tag into the document. So there's, there's quite a bit going on on line three, but it's actually the build tool that's letting us do this. And it has the import keyword. So like it looks like an ES module import, but actually the build tool is the thing that does the importing during, during the build process. Now lines five through seven are TypeScript. If you've never seen TypeScript before, essentially here we're describing an object. We're saying that this object will have a posts array, and then each one of those objects in the array is gonna be a post type. We dive into TypeScript and explain all of this in the course, but lines five through seven are all TypeScript. Line nine, first we see that export keyword. So this is ES module. So this is exporting this function so it can be used elsewhere in our code base. Uh, and then here we just have arguments to a function. So this is kind of just a plain old function, nothing special, but it is taking in an argument and we have some special syntax here. So this is destructuring. We're actually taking in an object and then pulling off the post property to be used as a variable in our code below. Uh, but this piece right here is modern JavaScript, it's destructuring. And then after that, we have a type annotation. And this is coming from TypeScript. Now, lines 11 through 13, when we see these curly braces here, this is actually uh, JSX or TSX because we're letting the system know that we are going to have some JavaScript expression inside of those curly braces. Then this map right here is actually not modern JavaScript. This was introduced, I think, in like ES5. It's been around for a very long time, but you see heavy use of map inside of React, and that is just JavaScript. Uh, then we have here an arrow function. So this is newer syntax for defining functions. It's a bit more terse, and there's some implications of how binding in this works. Uh, but here we do have an arrow function, which is modern JavaScript. And then on line 12, uh, we're using JSX or TSX to create an instance of a post component. And right here, we're using ES 2015 spread syntax to take all the properties of this object and spread them as props onto this component here. So as you can see, there's actually a lot going on in this one file. And I think my course does a really good job of breaking all of that down. So when you're working in a code base like this, you have a really good understanding of what is what, which is going to help you debug a lot easier because if you're trying to work through issues in this code, it can be really hard to determine what do you search for or what's actually happening on that line. So this course does a really good job, I think, of breaking all of this down so that you can have those skills when you're working in a React code base. So thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. Definitely check out reactroots.com to learn more. And also follow me over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash codinggarden. I'm live right now and I'm doing a Q&A answering any questions you might have about the course and also just talking about React in general. So again, uh, thank you for watching this and I'll see you in the next one.